everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am the Reading Torty. And today we are finally moving on to a new book after ranting about Call Me By Your Name, which is a book that's rant worthy. Um, time to move on to something new. And this video, the review, is going to be about Arcadia Falls by Carol Goodman, my little cheatsy index card. The cover is going to show up somewhere in this little area, right here. So, the book review is going to be based on notes, as you can probably see, because I'm just a notes person. Character, setting, plot, climax, and resolution. The genre is a mystery, so you can probably predict how it's going to end. There's a twist that kind of comes out of left field, and I'm like, whoa, where did that come from? But that's all right. And the publisher is Ballantine Books. It was published in 2010 retire index card now okay so as i mentioned a few seconds ago mystery is not a genre that i'm very familiar with so aside from going into being like hey who done it um i did go into it just fresh with an open mind this isn't my genre let's see what happens and i started the book not quite liking it and then i ended the book like I need to buy this book because even though it is a very whodunit book and you know who done it, kind of like from page two and a half, um, it's a very nice and fluffy read that I really found myself enjoying. And it's just a book that you get into and you see it coming from like 10.25 miles away. But that's okay. You, I enjoyed the ride. I really enjoyed it. I loved the characters, even though, yeah. They were a little one-dimensional, not a whole lot of character development with the main cast, but it was still fun. So with that in mind, Arcadia Falls by Carol Goodman is a mystery book that revolves around Meg and Sally Rosenthal and them dealing with the recent uh, death of their father and husband, Meg's husband, Sally's father, Jude. And they're, Sally's very estranged from her mom, Meg. So Meg decides to deal with the amount of debt that they have. They sold everything and they moved to Arcadia Falls and Sally is going to go to a private art academy, pretty much, uh, for the gifted and talented on a scholarship. And Meg took a job there teaching about fairy tales and folklore, which is kind of her forte and where she's getting her PhD. Immediately, the year starts off not well with the accidental death of a student. And things kind of just spiral from there. You know, you got the, the sheriff, Callum Reed, Callum Reed, coming into the scene. And all these secrets are buried. And clearly, you know, you know what's going on. The dean of the school is Ivy St. Clair. Ivy St. Clair. You'll, you'll know her when you see her. And it's pretty much Meg coming to terms with her role as a mother, her role as a daughter to her own mother, because there's a lot of development, her role in Sally's life and lack thereof, and just her identity as a person after Jude died, after she's picking her career back up because she did, you know, drop her career. So there's development on the superficial level, but it's nothing like deep. I never get into Meg and I'm just like in her and I know what's going on and I'm just drowning in it. And that's okay. Not everything, not everything needs to be like 10 levels in and then another 50 just for good measure. It's a fun, it's a fun fluffy read. And though the characters are not exactly, you know, the most dynamic characters, you know, they're teenagers. They got their little annoyances. They got their, their annoyances. I thought they were very annoying. but. There's also a subplot that revolves around Lily and Vera, who are the founders of the Academy. I found them to be riveting. They are two women that are lovers, and Vera is the one that kind of started the philosophy that a woman should not have children or marry to be able to truly develop her career and be a true artist. Whether you disagree with it or not, it's, it's up to you. But that's what, that was what Vera believed. And Lily was madly in love with Vera. And 
their insta love because it was kind of insta love was possibly the most realistic and beautiful moment of insta love i have ever experienced and i found myself wanting meg to kind of revisit Lil- lily and vera via lily's journal hint hint and I was so enthralled. I wanted to know what Lily was thinking, what Vera was thinking. I want to know Vera because she is this alpha dominating, powerful, powerful woman who started this based on her principles. And she says, I live by my rules. And if you don't live by my rules, I don't have to put up with you. And she's just, she's pretty awesome. She's a badass. And I want to learn about them. The story was well enough. Um, I don't like the resolution, if you can even call it that, between Lily and Vera. You know from the get-go that Lily is killed in a blizzard as she's trying to run away with her lover, Virgil Nash. Um, So I don't quite like the way that's handled, but it was still still good and almost a little more interesting than Meg and Sally's story, but I also found Sally very annoying. It's probably just the one-dimensional, you know, teenager. The plot, as stated before, is very whodunit. You know whodunit, except for that twist at the very end. That's like, whoa, where did that boat of crazy come out of? Like, literally the woodworks. But it was a pleasant ride. And even, even though, you know, you see it all coming and the twists and turns aren't really twists and turns. And you just you, you see it coming. That's all I can really say about it. It's all good. It was fun. One of my first mystery books, and it was very lighthearted, and there was humor, and there was romance drama, and something that kept just surrounding, inundating, dripping off the book. I, I heard it in audiobook, but it was still dripping off the audio, was the mystery and the folklore. That is something that just kind of blew me away, because it was so well done. The school was very founded uh, founded in pagan rituals, uh, particularly Wiccan rituals, which is claimed I don't know anything about Wiccans. I still, I'm trying to research it. But it's very grounded in Wiccan culture and folklore and fantasy. Meg is a fairy tale teacher, and fairy tales are just recurring throughout the entire story. The fairy tales that Vera and Lily wrote together, the fairy tales that are classic that everybody knows about. So the entire book has a very spooky, magical fog and mist around it. Like, you know, the sun's shining and it's 9 a.m., but there's still a mist and a fog in my head. And there's no magic wand or anything, but it's very eerie. And the presence of the magic that the fairy tales inspire, that the mystery inspires, is really always there. And that was really important for me for the setting, which is in Arcadia Falls. And for just the ambiance. Even though there's craziness going on, people are setting themselves on fire, kind of, sort of. You got the teacher coming in and you're just painting her hair and it's like all over the place. And you just imagine that harebrained teacher in high school that just looks like she barely got her socks on, right? It's still eerie and gloomy. And there's something in the background that's telling you whispering magic. And there's a breeze that moves and you're like, oh, who is that breeze? What is that breeze? Is that a spirit? So, I think that was very, very well done. It's permeating and you feel it. Like you you come out of it and you're just like, oh man, magic and you know, the spirit of that tree. And you you want to respect the tree because you believe that there's a spirit in it. Even though you may or may not believe that. But you know what? As soon as you come out of the book, you're like, whoa, I respect that tree because I'm pretty sure it has some amazing symbolism and I'm pretty sure something lives in it. So that's a lot of fun. The conflict and the resolution was a little convoluted, not going to lie. I felt like there were plot holes that you can probably put a dump truck through and still have room left. And everything seemed very rushed, as if everything was like, oh no, climax has been reached. Let's kind of just conclude everything and let's tie everything up, place it neatly on a shelf and just dust it in there, precise and pretty. That's not the way it works in real life. But even though it felt rushed, even though it was a little, uh, not to my precise taste, it was still lovely. And it was a pleasant book. 
after the whole bout of crazy attack happened. It was actually very pleasant. So the book, like I said, although it's not the most riveting, enthralling book that takes over my life and consumes me and makes me lose sleep over it, it's still very good. And I really enjoyed it. I'm actually going to buy it. So, ah, honestly, you guys can judge if I like a book because if I don't already own it and I'm going to go purchase it, it means that something stuck with me. And what stuck with me with this book was the magic. And it was the small town that I want to go to. And I want to go into the little novelty shop or, or, you know, the herb shop. And I want the lady there to look at me and I want to sneeze and I want her to tell me, may the goddess bless you. And I want her to mean it because she believes in the goddess of the moon and she believes in the healing power of the spirits and the souls. And I want to go visit this place and I want it to be as enthralled in the Wiccan culture, in folklore, in just the mystery and eeriness that this book is. So it's, it's just a good book. It's a fluffy read, but it's a good fluffy read. And I really enjoyed it. And I'm so glad that this was an introduction to mystery. And I'm going to go check out another book by Carol Goodman because I read that she kind of has a formula. But you know what? I'm still going to give it a shot because I, I really enjoyed it. And I still find myself thinking about Lily and Vera because to me, Lily and Vera have an unfinished story. And I will never have their true finished story, in my opinion. But they haunt me. And the book haunts me. And the beech tree is just very haunting to me now. And I think I couldn't ask for anything more from a book than to just stick to me. It's not Call Me By Your Name, but it's still really good. So that's it for my book review. Thank you guys for stopping by. Be safe, and I'll catch you next time. Bye!